G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today I'm working on a little project that's been on the back burner for quite some time, and it's to do with fly cutters. Now, here's a couple of fly cutters that I made you know, a while back. Oh, there's a video on that one. I think there's even a video on this one, I'm not sure. That's a pretty old one. And these are okay, but these are only small diameter fly cutters. And when you're working, you know, uh, casting stuff like, you know, I do backyard casting and you want to face up something fairly large, these really aren't big enough. You've got to do several passes and then you're going to get overlap and it's going to look crappy, you know. So for a long time I've been wanting to make a big fly cutter, you know. And once again, I do all my milling on the lathe. I don't have a mill because I just don't have the space for one at the moment. So it's a compromise. But anyway, it's better than nothing. And, you know, there's an easy, easy, easy way to do big fly cutting on the lathe, and I'll show you what it is. So here we have it. Face plate. Most lathes come with a face plate. Most face plates never see the light of day. They never get used by most people. I apologise to all the um, model engine makers out there, though. They do. The majority of people never use their face plate. It just sits there gathering dust. And uh, it's one of those mysteries, you know, face plate. But the face plate is actually it's really the basis for a gigantic fly cutter. And you don't have to do a lot to make up a, a quick and dirty fly cutter. Now, you can actually do this several ways. If you've got a milling machine, you can go all high tech. But we're going to do the low tech way. And basically, all you have to do with your fly, with your uh, face plate, is get a small block of steel that will cover one of your slots. Get a bolt. Bolt comes through from underneath and threads through your block. You just drill and tap your block. So then you can pull that down hard into the slot. And then you have some high speed steel which will go through your slot and will go through your metal block. So you're going to drill through that. You're going to drill and tap through that to take this bolt from underneath you're going to drill and tap and put a grub screw in to hold your, your high speed steel to keep it from moving. Instant fly cutter. What could be simpler and easier? Now this is not a new idea, this is not a Rob idea, this is an idea that's been around for a long, long time. And a lot of people with very small lathes generally use this technique uh, as they've got a small face plate. Yeah. Provided you get the face plate up close enough to the job without hitting the cross slide or the carriage. This is a, a simple, simple way of making up a fly cutter. So I'll, I'll do it. To do this I'm going to use a 12mm metric bolt and a 12mm metric tap. That comes out of those little cheap sets. That's the largest size that you generally get in your little metric set. But yeah, you get the bolt. Fairly snug fit, stronger is better. And now we just have to drill and tap into our little block of metal. To drill the two holes for the, for the high speed steel and the, the bolt, all you need is your drill press or the four jaw chuck. If you do use a drill press, uh, make sure that uh, you put a support underneath the table to stop any flex, allow for any flex, because these things will flex. Particularly if you're doing big, drilling big holes and you don't want to run out. So yeah, hydraulic jack under the table, easy way to stop the table canting down. Also, if you ever buy a drill press, make sure it's got a rotating table. That way you can always centre your job. Drill presses with a fixed table are a pain in the butt because you've got to move the whole job around, the whole vice. With these, you can swing them through on two arcs basically 
this arc and also this arc. So you can always find centre. So, yeah, I would never consider buying a, a drill press that didn't have a rotating table. Another little tip, if you do use a, a, a drill press, naturally you always bolt your vice down if you're at all safety conscious. It horrifies me to see the number of people on YouTube channels drilling stuff, holding metal with just bare hands even. If that catches, it could just do nasty, nasty stuff to you. But a lot of people live dangerously. Also, I use two vices, not for a positioning thing, although it will help you if you don't have a rotating table. You can have a, a, a little engineer's vice and an ordinary drill press vice, but I do it this way to save using packing if I'm drilling. This has got serrated jaws which will mark your work, and this one's got, the big one's got plain jaws. So if I wanted to drill this without marking it, all I do is just take out the little engineer's vice use the bottom one. It's a good little way to go. It doesn't take up any more space and you can, as I said, you've got more positioning power with your work and you can choose whether or not you're going to mark the job. All right, I'll drill the holes. The main trouble with cheap taps like these that you get in these sets is that they're hard to start. They don't start as nicely as the good ones, but once you get them going, they're right. So just use a bit of a jerking action, and they'll tend to bite in a bit better. Just don't, you know, don't overdo it. Now we're underway. Just, you know. Take it easy, they'll get you there. Now we're right. Use cutting fluid when you're tapping. Just feed it in and out so I can clear the, clear the cutters. I just use a bit of kerosene and engine oil, that works alright. You can use WD 40 or Whatever takes your fancy. This is quite good quality steel this. It's probably 1045 or something like that. It's not soft, you know. Well done. Now we'll drill the hole for the uh, high speed steel. So there's no flex there, the table didn't move. dangerous time for tapping is at breakthrough point when you get to the bottom of the drill section when you're breaking out they can grab on you same as a normal drill once again that's the most dangerous point they can catch and spoil your day
Okay, so she's all done. There it is, piece of cake. Man, how much simpler could it be than that? That's nothing, you know. No mill required. Now, I do suggest you put a washer on the back of your bolt. Spread the load a bit. And she comes in. Under there. Now, you can put this on two ways. You can have it with the high speed steel on the outside. Just pull up your pull up your nut, your bolt rather. Like so. Well, now that gives you the maximum cutting area. Or you can put it around this way and have it that way. Makes it easier to, to do up. And I mean, to all intents and purposes, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big arc. That, that's really all you need. You really don't need to have it right out near the edge. And you've probably got to try and clear the cross slide anyway. So, in the carriage. So I think this is your best position here. And if you've got it there, like that, you could actually put a spring washer under the head as well. And that would stop it any chance of it coming and done. So I think that's your best position. You can see it gives you quite a bit of flexibility. You know, you can see in there how the, you know, the steel goes, the high speed steel, and you can grind and cut that to any shape and length you want. So the whole thing is dirt, dirt simple. And I suppose the next thing is to try it out and see if it works. It'll work, I can guarantee it. But we will anyway. Once again, this is a good example of where these little air die grinders are great for cutting hard stuff like high speed steel. You'd never cut this with a hacksaw. The only way to cut this is to grind it. These are good, they're only about 25 bucks, but they work great. to go. You can see the high speed steel goes through. It doesn't actually butt up against the back plate. It could, but I've cut it short to keep the weight down and reduce the imbalance. You can see I've got the grab screw on the front so that all the load is going back that way for the inside position, so I deliberately did that. I mean, when you've got it on the outside position, it will be on the wrong side, but it doesn't really matter. Nothing's going to happen. That won't move. So, yeah. It's uh, it's all go. Okay, I'll show you the thing in action. That was a good job. That was only at 460 RPM. One thing I do have to do on this is I have to move this uh, mill slide back a bit. When I fitted this originally, I should have actually had it back further than, I, than I've got it. So I think I'll drill some more holes in the, the top slide and uh, 
Yeah, bring it back more. Where it is, it's good for some jobs, but not for others. When you get big stuff, you really want to be back more with it. So yeah, we're going a bit more with it. job it does a good job so here's a final look at it from this side it's simple as simple I think so I'll just put another bolt there uh, to offset the weight so if you had the exact same weight we could spin it up to whatever revs you wanted to but I'm only going slow so it's not shaking much but I did try it at 600 and she shook a bit <laughs> a bit too much that was before I put that on but even so if you're going to spin anything over sort of the 500 mark, I think you really should have the uh, forces balanced out. But anyway, there you have it. It's my latest uh, addition to the, to the workshop, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Do it simple for facing. You can mill steel with it, and provided you've got a good quality high-speed steel. Um, otherwise, it will just take the it will just take the tip off if it's too hard. So, uh, yeah. The only alternative otherwise is to use carbide and you could actually make up a little carbide cutting block, you know, to bolt onto your, onto your uh, faceplate as well. Just have a, the same sort of setup, but just mount a, uh, a cardboard insert on it in some way. Anyway, plenty of, plenty of food for thought there, so that's it for me. See you next time. Cheers.